right, I'm here with the guest of honor this weekend. What, what does it mean to you to be the guest of honor? Like your um, your pictures everywhere, your names all over the place. It's kind of like public humiliation, you know. It's I've never been comfortable with adulation, hmm. un- unless you know it's scantily clad young no. ladies. But that's that's usually later in the day. Exactly no. <laughs> by the pool. They promised me that. Well, wizard, wizard does it up. Um, Thanks, wizard. So let's let's get into let's. I, I got a couple of questions about Wanted first. Uh, how excited are you about the film that that's coming out? <laughs> uh, about as stoked as you can get. Um, the more I see of it, the more excited I get. Uh, Timmer is such a, a incredibly visual director. I don't know how many people have seen his Russian films, but they're over the top with the visuals, and he's got a fast storytelling style. Which, when I heard he was going to direct Wanted, I couldn't think of anybody that would have done a better job and he's just knocked it out of the park it's crazy good yeah it's kind of one of those marriages that just just immediately works but I mean, they had a pretty a pretty great uh you know sketchbook to to go off of with with the graphic novel and with with the complete story of wanted um when you guys did those characters though you've talked about openly about how you based them on certain actors and actresses that's and I, mark but then you go well but you brought them to life you yeah. kind of you know but when <laughs> when it came time and you were like well, she didn't look like that in the book, but it's Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I mean, was it <laughs> yeah, I was actually surprised at the cast they got for that. Was, Angelina was a good call, and casting James McAvoy before he had his huge explosive year last year ended up being really fortuitous. So he's he's one of my favorite actors out there, and I I, I think he he's such a camera. great yeah he's such a great choice, and I. I, I I would go out on a limb and say he would do it even after his, his year last year. It looks to be a, a great film. It, it looks to be a lot of fun. It looks to, just to – hopefully it can kind of – it's that dark horse this summer, you know. He had, like, I huge so. openings, but I think one is going to do really well. Um, yeah, I think we're up against a little Pixar film that weekend, so <laughs> we might <laughs> – Well, any of the adults that don't want to go and watch, you know, a little film about a robot uh, – you know, Different you guys might do well, you know? Different yeah. demographic. So I, I'm really excited. I know which, which movie I'll be in that weekend. So. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so to go back a little bit, when I first met you, mm-hmm. I met you in Midtown Comics in New York City, and uh, it was within the first five issues of 52. Uh, is, there, is there a specific cover over that huge span of time that really stood out to you, something that, that you, you were really excited to do or something that you're, you're really excited in the way it turned out? Um. There were a number of them that I liked for different reasons. Um, I liked the Rene Montoya as the question. What issue was that? Forty something. I can't remember <laughs> them all. There's so many. Um, because I had to pull that one out in a day. Basically, I was leaving to see my dad at Christmas in Louisiana, and got a call on Friday. My plane was leaving on Sunday. I said, "We need a cover for solicitation by Monday." I had to come up with something on the fly. Now, under pressure like that, is is it more fun to perform like that, or is it is it better when you have time to map it out and and really, or do you start to think about it too much when it, when you have um, a lot of time on? Sometimes, I, yeah, I think you can overthink a cover. There was one I remember I turned in twenty five sketches and I still couldn't get something I was happy with. Mm. Uh, so sometimes when you're under pressure, just boom, you have to go with your instinct. That works better. Speaking about being under pressure, Final Crisis right now, all all of it's all of it's on your shoulders. Are you guys on schedule right now? You Absolutely. guys, you guys Absolutely. ready to go? Uh, I have uh, DC sends people over to crack the whip on me. You know, make sure my doors are locked from the outside, and uh, yeah, they have armed guards, so I can't. Big escape. Lou Ferrigno comes over to make sure you're on schedule, and he's a big man. <laughs> I know. He almost crushed my forearm last time I met him, <laughs> just shaking my hand. My entire arm just crumbled. Um, well, that, it's great to hear. That it looks beautiful. Thank you. Is, uh, is, is there a specific character that's kind of popped to you from Final Crisis that you were just really having a great time with? Um, issue two, we revived an old Kirby character, fourth world character, who was in Forever People called Sonny Sumo. He's just this big mountain of Japanese sumo wrestler, and... I have a little kind of dirty secret. I love to watch the sumo championships every year in August on television. So Sunny Sumo is just tons of fun to draw for me. Is there anything that, besides, I know your head's right in Final Crisis right now. Is Mm -hmm. there anything beyond that that you're you're really excited about? Um, After Final Crisis, I'm going to take a vacation. All right. 
and I already have my next couple of projects mapped out. I'm going to write and draw a graphic novel that I've been sitting on for a while, and if that goes well, I have a few more, so we'll see. All right, well, enjoy the vacation. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks it was a, a pleasure. Thank you.